Hello guys, hope you're doing good. If you're interested to move to New Zealand and settle there permanently, I'm sure you would be interested in this video because in this video we'll discuss the eligibility criteria of getting the New Zealand PR. We'll discuss the points table of the New Zealand immigration system through which you can actually apply the New Zealand resident visa. And we'll also see how many invitations are issued regularly so you'll get an idea what is the probability of you getting the invitation for resident visa. So if you want to check out if you're eligible or not, do watch this video till the end. Hello everyone, I'm Shitanshu from Dream Abroad and I regularly make videos to help you immigrate and settle abroad. As I make many videos on Canadian PR, if you have any questions related to that, you can join our Facebook group Dream Abroad Canada and you can also follow me on Instagram at Dreamers Abroad. It's all about fun and my life here in Canada. Okay guys, so last week I made this video which was about the New Zealand PR step-by-step -step process. First of all, thank you so much for all the love. More than 35,000 people have already watched it and I'm pretty sure that thousands of you would be watching it in the days to come. Now in this video, I explained you the detailed step-by-step -step process to apply the New Zealand PR. So here you can see all those steps I mentioned here and basically I told you about the skilled migrant category resident visa and the first step in there was self-assessment. Now here I told you that the points are based on age, education, work experience, partner skills, also on skilled employment in New Zealand and the minimum points are 160. So in this video we will be this. So in this video we will be So in this video we so in this video we would be actually discussing this first point to check and to assess what is the eligibility criteria and how you can calculate your points so that you can assess it yourself if you're actually eligible to apply the resident visa or not. And by the way, if you haven't watched this video, I'll provide the link in the description box below. You can check it out. So this is the official page of Government of New Zealand. We can go on, put our details in and we can check the points that we actually have. Now many people were asking in the last video that the minimum points is 100 but I was saying that the minimum points are 160. So what is this confusion all about? So let me show this to you. The 100 points are required to be accepted into the pool but currently they are only selecting EOIs with 160 points or above. So I hope that this point is pretty clear now. The eligibility criteria these days is 160 points but you can still create a profile in the pool if you score 100 points or above. Okay, so in this page, they've mentioned all the details which all documents would be required. So we will just skip this part here and we'll quickly move on to this points indicator. If you're interested to know the documents and all, I'll provide the link to this web page in the description box below. You can check it out. So this right here is the points indicator, all the calculator through which you can calculate your points. So if you select that you're 55 years or under, you'll get certain points for it, but you'll have to select your date range. So let's say I select 20 to 39 years for which you'll get maximum points that is 30. If you are above 39 years of age, then let's say between 40 to 44, you'll get 20 points and so on. But I'll select 20 to 39 here. Then moving on, skilled employment. So now they're asking if you're working in skilled employment in New Zealand or if you have an offer in the skilled employment in New Zealand. Now if you have either of these you can select it but I know most of my audience would not have this so I would just skip this part. Moving over it's about the qualification. So if you have a recognized qualification so you'll have to get your education assessed by the New Zealand authority and this is the official web page for that. New Zealand Qualifications Authority and if you want to check your qualifications what level is your qualification you can go on to put in your details you can just click on this link here it will take you to this web page and here just for example I've searched for Masters of Business Administration which is MBA and I got to know that the level is 9 for someone who has completed his MBA and is also recognized by NZQA. So I'll just go on to put the same here. Let me just select here and put level nine or 10 post grad. So I'll get 70 points for this. So now you see 
you've completed 100 points and you can go on to create your profile. Okay, now let's move ahead. If you have completed your qualification from New Zealand, then you can also put it in here. You'll get more points for that. So let's see if you have, let's say you've completed your post graduation from New Zealand, then you'll get 10 points for that. And similarly, but I'll just skip this point again for now. Now about the work experience. So this is actually quite different because when you talk of work experience, you, you should have the skilled work experience. Uh, what does this mean? You can go on to click this link and you can get the details to know about that. And when I select this option here, it will ask for my work experience. Now here we are not talking about the skilled work experience. In New Zealand, we are talking about the international work experience. So if you have, let's say, six years of work experience, you'll get 30 points. If you have eight years of work experience, you'll get 40 points. And if you have 10 years or more of work experience, you'll get 150 points. So finally, we've got 150 points here. Now let's see how we can score even more. Target is to score 160. Now, if you have the New Zealand work experience, as I told you, you'll get more points. And similarly, if you have work experience in any of the absolute skill shortage, then you can score more points as well. But I won't be talking about this in this video because this video is very generic and for all of those people who don't have these kinds of work experiences. Now talking about the last part through which you can score more points. So your partner. So if you're married, then you can actually go on to this. So here it is mentioned that if your partner has also scored 6.5 or more in IELTS and similarly in other tests, you can score more points. Uh, for that, you need to select one more option here. You need to confirm if your partner has got skilled work experience in New Zealand or has been offered. Uh, I'll skip this part again, but choose the most common part here that your partner has got a recognized qualification. So once again, it would come down to the recognized qualification. Let's say if I choose level seven to eight here, you'll get 10 points and you'll straight away get eligible. Now for a couple who have both got master's degree, you can score even more because you'll get 20 points and your score would be 170. So basically this is how you can actually calculate if you would actually be eligible to apply for the New Zealand PR or rather I should say you would be eligible to apply the skilled migrant category resident visa and yes if you have the required score then you can definitely apply. Now let's talk about now let's talk about the number of invitations that are issued every year as I told you in the last video since last 11 months they haven't conducted any draws because their EOI process is on a pause at the moment because of the COVID-19 restrictions. But the last draw that they conducted was on 18th of March 2020 and they usually conducted these draws every two weeks. Now I have the details of this draw here. So even in the start of 2020 the cutoff score was 160 and mind it not everyone who has got the score of 160 or above would get the invitation but it depends on your profile and your score. So we can see that out of 684, most of the people, around 90% of the people had the job offer. But yes, there were 10% people who did not have the job offer, but still got the invitations. Similarly, in the previous months as well, we can see that more than 10% people actually around 12 to 15% people actually got this invitation who didn't have a job offer. So yes, guys, I really hope that you would have got the idea. It is actually difficult to get the ITA if you haven't got the job offer. But yes, it is not impossible. If you're interested in scoring good in the points table, you can actually start preparing so that you can apply for the New Zealand Skilled Migrant Category Resident Visa. That was all the information I wanted to convey through this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please click the subscribe button. If you have any questions, any comments, please put it down in the comment section below. And yes, do not forget to like and share this video with your friends. Thanks again for watching this video.